Okay, so our next job is to find the best IDE so we can carry on with our projects. IDE, just as a quick reminder, is the integrated development environment. It's the software where we're gonna type our code and make sure our project is running. It's the software that can help us also to type a better code, don't make any mistakes, and especially debug our projects from now on. So let's head up to Google and uh, see what we can find. Uh, I'm gonna type IDE for Java script and let's see what Google's can recommend. I believe I should be typing on chat GPT, but anyway, let's go for Google. Uh, so the first few in here just adds uh, tiny cloud. I use it that, that's fine. And those are the most popular IDEs uh, that Google can find right now. I'm just trying to bring my pen here. There we go. So we have WebStorm, Atom. I've been using Atom for so long. Uh, NetBeans, but still not my favorite right now. I believe my favorite one is a little bit below. Uh, if we scroll down, let's see how good is still Google. Kind of, I see over here, yeah, but let's go, let's type on Google the actual tool. Visual Studio Code, so Visual Studio Code, yeah? Visual Studio Code is the, it's my preferred ID, I would say. And, and let's be honest, 95% of the uh, developers from many programming languages, they go for uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'm on the Visual Studio Code webpage. So let me just make this font a little bit bigger. And uh, on the top, I can click on the download button or you can click on the download on my case because I'm using Mac. Uh, it just auto detects and uh, you can download the Mac Universal. Let's go to the download button on the top and here you can see the three operational systems. So if you are a Windows user, click over here. If you are a Mac user, click over here. And if you are a Linux user and prefer to download the .deb or the .rpm, those links are available as well. So in my case, I have removed my Visual Studio Codes just to walk you through the step-by-step -step on how to download and install. I'm gonna click in Mac and uh, the installation, actually the download has been started. So from now on, you just have to click over here, extract the files and run the installation. The installation is a simple step-by-step, -step, very easy to do. Make sure you install the Visual Studio Code. And on the next class, I'm gonna show you a few extensions. They are very useful and uh, it's gonna make our life way easier from now on. So, okay, download the Visual Studio Code, install, and I see you in the next class. I can see we are making some progress. After the download and installation of the Visual Studio Code, now it's time to open for the first time and enable a few extensions. Those extensions, they're gonna help us to write a better code and especially test JavaScript locally. So I have my Visual Studio uh, Code open over here. Uh, there is a welcome message. You can leave that open or close on the X. And on the left hand side, the folder project. We don't have any project right now, so let's just leave like that. On the left hand side, you do have a few icons. The first one is for Explorer and then search and source control and so on and so forth. But the last one in here is the extensions. So make sure you click in extensions and uh, from the extensions point of view, those are plugins that you can install into the Visual Studio Code and they do different tasks. For example, they help us to write a better code or changing the icons or run a live server. So my first one in here is called Material Icon, that's the one, Material Icon Theme. So what you have to do is click on the Material Icon Theme and click into Install. This plugin or extension will set 
special icons for every single file that we can create inside inside of our project. And uh, it's gonna be much easier to uh, visualize later on. So this is the first one, installation is done, it's very quick, it's very easy. Okay, set. The next one is the live server. So when, as soon as I type live server, let me just remove this, live server. This is the extension that I'm looking for, launch a development local server, and then click over here, click in install, and the installation will be done in a few seconds. Great, so this is the live server. Why do we need the live server? JavaScript runs on top of um, any web browser. So in our case, we're gonna choose the Google Chrome. You can pick any other one, but I believe Google Chrome is the easiest one to work with JavaScript, especially when you are creating projects and into a development state. So live server builds a web server locally in your machine. So you don't have to set it up a server, a separate machine, and every time you update your code or you create a few lines of code, you have to copy across, so you don't have to do anything of that. Everything is gonna be running into your uh, local machine. Plus the auto refresh. Every time you change your code, you can see live how this code looks like. So make sure you install the two extensions. Throughout the course, we may gonna install a new ones, another ones, uh, but right now, just the live server and uh, the material icon. And uh, I see you in the next class. And yes, we are checking some boxes here. Download and installation of the ID completed, extensions completed. Now we need to set up the folder structure inside of the Visual Studio code. And basically, inside of that folder structure, we're gonna create three files. Those three files, I call the three musketeers, yeah? Those three files, they are the foundation to build a good application or any project inside of or with JavaScript. Can I build a JavaScript application with one single file? Yes, you can. But when you start to grow in the application and making that application more available, uh, you will run into trouble because everything is gonna be in one single file. So don't go down to that route. I know looks like it's the easiest one, but it's better to start uh, with the right configuration, I would say. So, okay, on Visual Studio, I will click into the open folder button. If the button is not here, you can go to the menu, menu file. Unfortunately, it's not into the recording, but you can go to the menu file and click into the open folder option. So as soon as I click over here, I have a folder called JavaScript. You can name your folder. Uh, you can place your folder anywhere. Just place in a safe place where you always have availability to that. So I'm gonna point to JavaScript and click into open. Great, okay, I'm back to the welcome message. Right now, I will close the welcome message. I'll do a right click on the left hand side and I'm gonna click into the new file. The new file, first one is the web page itself. It's the HTML page where Part of our code will be there and uh, it's gonna be the, the, the place where you link to the actual JavaScript pages. So my page will call index.html. As soon as I type index.html, check it out this icon over here. Yeah, so the icon changed the color. Now the Visual Studio code knows this is gonna be a HTML5 file. And uh, the guy responsible to change this icon was the extension material icon theme. So that's why it's so good to, be, to use this extension. Okay, so first file is done. The second file is the one that's gonna give more color and uh, formatting and all the pretty stuff you can apply to a uh, project or to an application, they are coming from this file. Is the styles.css. So 
Visual Code identified that as a CSS file and uh, it changed the icon. And the third, the last one, but not the most important, and probably in the bigger applications, you're gonna have more than one file, is the JS file, the JavaScript file, the one where the brain of the application is gonna be there. So right click, new file, and uh, I can call this main, I can call app, I can call site, just for my example, I'm gonna call it main, yeah? Main.js, press return, and you have the three files. So the files are open over here, they are opening tabs, and uh, this is the folder and files structure that we are looking for. The next step, we're gonna start typing some code. Now, I wanna make sure our web server is up, running, and working. So we need one more piece of configuration, but just let's put a pause over here. We have the index, well, if I can write, index.html. We do have also the styles or style.css. And we also have the main.js. Those files in a real project, in a real application, they should be inside of a, a main server uh, and this server running and acting as a web server and any configuration or any change that you do, you do inside of the server itself, yeah? If the project is big enough, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a, a development server and a production server, but we're not dead yet. The point I wanna get is, the server, it's gonna be our local PC, yeah? So remember a few classes ago, we did install the live server. So the live server, it's here, it's inside, and it's running. I wanna make sure the live server can see the HTML file, the CSS file, and the JS file. And to be very honest, they don't need, the web server doesn't need to see the other two. Because later on, we're gonna go to the HTML file and point to the styles or style and the main JS file. So the web server right now needs to see the HTML main page. And we need to test to make sure it's working. So back to my visual code, I need some code inside of the HTML file. So without going to all the HTML theory behind of every single page, if you start typing HTML and click into this option, yeah, the HTML, the first one that shows up here, you're gonna have uh, begin the beginning of the web page coding, yeah? But that's not what I'm looking for. I wanted the visual code to give me the full code of a basic web page. So that's why you should choose the second option in my case right now, which is the HTML5. So I click into the HTML5 and guess what? Let me just uh, hide this portion of my my screen. This is a basic HTML file where I have the title, I also have a few informations about the content, but this is a, an actual web page, yeah? I can change the web page to uh, my project, something like that, and later on when we run our web server, you should be able to see this as a, as a name of the page, which means as a title, yeah? So, okay, I have my code. I'm gonna type the Control S or Command S just to save, and uh, I'm going back to the files, and I'm gonna do a right click and make sure the server can see this file, or I'm gonna start the server pointing to this file. So I did right click and I'm gonna click open with live server. That is a shortcut over here, but normally you have to do that once. So I click, 
a new page is gonna open up and there we go, we have our project. And you may be thinking, Andre, what is the project? So the project, I can see the title of my page is here and uh, whatever you type inside of the body, which is right over here, it's gonna show into the page. So for example, hello world, yeah? Of course I cannot do it like that. I need to put some quotes here and that, but hello world, it's gonna do the job. Save, so I'm gonna save over here and go back to the page. You have the hello world. If it's too small, you can increase because we have no CSS pointed to that. So I can do that via code. I don't have to zoom to the page, but basically we have our server working. And uh, the beautiful part is the web server, it's running locally. Look at the 127.0.0.1 address, port 5500 index.html. This is our file. This file in here is this file over here. So if you get to this stage, that means your machine is compatible with the live server and it's working. If you don't get to that page, if you don't see your first page, you probably have a problem with the firewall in your PC or antivirus. It could be blocking your PC. Something is blocking your network. It could be your network, your local network as well. And uh, you have to fix that before you move to the project number one. So if you get to this stage, you are good to go. And I see you on the project number one. Welcome to the project number one. I'm so happy to see you here and I hope you are excited to start this project. So basically this class is the class where I'm gonna do a quick overview about the project that we are about to start, the project ahead, yeah? So over here, I'm gonna give you all the details that you need and uh, if you have a little bit of experience with JavaScript, you may try to do it by yourself. Otherwise, you just follow the videos. I'm gonna go step by step without jumping anything, without hiding any line of code and all in a very good pace. So grab your coffee. My one is here. Good morning. It's morning for me. If you don't like coffee, I don't know, you shouldn't be here. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm kidding. So grab your drink. Uh, learning must be a fun stuff. Yeah, it must be fun. Learning, especially new technology like this one, programming language, JavaScript, it must be fun. We must have fun. So bring your drink and, uh, and let's go. Let's move on. So what I'm expecting from the first project, the project number one is this. I already made a few line of code and uh, those line of codes, they, give, they gave me a result. The result, unfortunately, I cannot see right now because I am outputting the result into the development console of my browser. So every single browser provides a tool or a set of tools to the developers, to us, to make our life easy. Google Chrome has its own development tools and you can access those clicking, doing the right click in a blank page and then going to inspect. As soon as I open inspect, inspect that, let me just make this a little bit bigger. There we go. As soon as I open inspect and uh, I'm just gonna move my screen over here. You should be able to see on the top, the menus or the tabs for elements, for the console, for the sources, network performance, and so on. Those tools, they provide information that can make our life easier when we are coding and especially when we are, we are troubleshooting something. So based on that, if I go to console, uh, sorry, before we go to console, yeah, you can see my hello world is here. You can see that this code is injected by the live server. So everything that we've done on before we started the project one is right over here and you can see in plain code or plain English code, I would say, yeah? And, uh, and also we can see the console. Console is gonna be our best friend from now on. Everything that you wanna output, 
not to the actual page, but somewhere, and then you can move to the actual page, actual page. This somewhere, it's the console. So if you output the console, the end user won't be able to see it, but you can test and you can just make sure everything is working. And the output that I'm getting is, my name is Andrei Yakono, and I'm 28 years old. And yes, I am 28 years old. If you don't believe, yeah, I'm not. But anyway, that, that's my age over here, okay? So this code, it's coming from a file. Which file is that? Is the main file .js that we created previously. But how do I get this code over here? There are many things that I did enable and typed and code that I'm gonna show you step by step on the next classes, yeah? But this is the end result. If we get to the end of the project one with this result, we are good to go to the project number two. So let's go to the next class. The first step we need to do to make sure our project is gonna work is checking if the HTML file can see the JS file. Remember the three files that we created a few classes ago? So just going back to the drawing board, uh, we have the JS, the HTML file, which is this one. And we also have a second file where all the JavaScript code is gonna be. And the third file, which is the style.css, where all the formatting and, uh, and the pretty part of our web pages are gonna sit. So the live server, it's right over here. The live server can see the HTML and the HTML needs to find a way to load the JS file and also the CSS file. So my first step right now is making sure HTML can load the JS file and show into the web page everything that is inside of that file. So we're gonna link the HTML file to see the JS file or linking the JS file inside of the HTML file, if that makes sense. And the second one is the same for the CSS file. Right now, we're gonna focus on the first uh, task. And the first task is linking those two. So I'm going back to my visual code. I'm on the HTML page. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. Inside of the HTML page, we have basically two sections over here. The first section is the head and the second section is the body. Yeah. The head gets is executed first, and then the body. For best practice, we need to make sure our reference to the JS file, it's inside of the body because it's gonna make our application load faster, yeah? There are so many other best practices behind this, but take that as a first rule. So I'm going down here into the body. And uh, if you have more code inside of the body, make sure it's the last line. It's gonna be easier to find later on. And uh, if you are sharing this code with another developer, uh, that's gonna be the first place they're gonna look for. So inside of it here, we're gonna type script, and I'm looking for the script source, which is this one. So I selected that one, press return, and uh, it does the script and the script source. Now I need to point where is my JS file. So the JS file, as far as I remember, calls main.js and it's on the same folder. So if I'm not, if I can show you my folder structure over here, the JS file, it's here inside of the same folder, which is the JavaScript folder, index and style CSS. If it's not, you're gonna have to uh, give the HTML file the full path on how to get to that place, how to get to that file, yeah? In my case, because it's on the same folder, I'm just gonna write main.js. I can click over here and done. Make sure you save your configuration. So what does that mean is, 
HTML now knows how to get to the JS file. So this part is done. The next class, we're gonna type something inside of the JS file, the main JS, and, uh, and check if you can see in our console or in our page, the HTML page. So I see you in the next class. Now we are going to test if the HTML file can see the JS file, typing a simple hello world message. And to do that, I'm going to the main.js file and I'm gonna type the command, the code to send a message to the console. I don't wanna send the message to the actual HTML document. I just wanna send a message to the console because if you can get to the console, that means I can get to the HTML. They are in the same place, so let's go. The, the code is console.log, open and close parentheses, and inside, I'm gonna put a single quote, and inside of the single quote, it can be a double quote as well, inside of the single quote, I'm gonna type the hello world, okay? Make sure you save your project, save the file, Whenever you see a dot over here on the top, that means we have a change on the file, but that change hasn't been saved. So when I save, I use Command S or Control S, uh, the dot just goes away. And uh, if I head to the page, I can see my hello world. So let's just make sure that hello world, it is coming from my main.js. So the hello world is inside of the console and uh, this hello world is coming from the file main.js, double colons, and then the line number, the line code number. In our case, line number one. So if you go back over here and check the visual code, it is the main.js and it is line number one. So if I just copy this and paste underneath, I can send two console messages, save two exactly the same console messages, one on line one, one on line two. So you may be thinking, okay, so that's how you had the message, uh, my name is Andre Iacono and I'm 28 years old, kind of. There are two ways to do that. So the first one is this. So let's go over here and change for the first message. My name is Andrea Iacono. And yes, I am kind of Italian. <laughs> and uh, I am 28 years old. And then you may see, uh, I, actually with this, we just hit our first problem over here. I'm using quotes, single quotes, but the problem is when I'm writing I am, Java, JavaScript thinks the single quotes is started over here and it's ending over here. So it doesn't know the single quotes starts here and ends here. It thinks it starts over here and ends over here. Hmm, what should we do? So in this case, I'm gonna change the single quotes for a double quote. When I do that, I'm making the double quote clear that we should start over here and finish on the next double quote. Any single quote inside, it's part of, um, of my text. In, the, in this case, it's part of my string, okay? Normally, I use single quotes. Some developers, they like to use double quotes, always. Some developers always to like to leave a semicolon at the end. Some don't, like myself. I don't leave the double, the semicolon at the end. It's a personal preference. In today's day, you don't have to. It used to be, mandatory to to have the, the the semicolon at the end in today's days not anymore so okay i have the message let me save this file and uh see if i can get there we go that's the end result 
but the project doesn't end over here because right now everything is so static. I need to, let's say I have to change the name of the person, yeah? I have to come over here and change the name. But let's say I'm using this piece of code somewhere down the line. So I have to change my name everywhere. It's too static. We need to find something more dynamic. And we, when we are talking about dynamic, maybe we are uh, having a reference to uh, variables. So the next class, I'm going to teach you a little bit about variables and how you, we can make our code a little bit more dynamic. So I see you on the next one. Now let's talk about variables. Variables is like a, a, a container, a container that stores data. So if you have data that needs to be stored and then reuse it so many times or multiple times inside of your code, it's better use variables. Uh, the best way to show you how to do that is actually over here in the console. To create your first variable, you must start with the let command. So when you type let, JavaScript knows, here comes a variable. And then you give the variable name. So for example, I wanna create a variable that can store my first name and then my last name and then the third one will be my age. So the first one is gonna be first name. I'm gonna type first name. And uh, every time you create a variable, make sure this variable means something if someone is reading that code. If I make my first variable uh, to store the first name, yeah, as a FN, it doesn't make too much sense. It's too short and uh, it can get very confusing later on. So don't worry about writing big pieces of or, or two, three sequence of words because the more you explain, the better your code will be later on. My first one is first name, and the first letter is always in lowercase, and then the first letter of the second word, it's always uppercase, and so on from that. Equals to, and uh, what kind of data do I need to store? Not what kind, what data do I need to store, store in this first variable? So the data will be my name. So over here, some developers, they put up, uh, semicolon, in my case, I won't. And uh, that's my first variable. So let, first name, and Andre. Can I use this variable and return the result of this variable into the console? Yes, I can. So the first one in here, I'm just gonna remove this part and type first name. So console log, first name. I'm gonna save, go to the console, and I have my name in there. Line in number six. So line number six means the console log, it's logging whatever is inside, let me just clean my screen, whatever is inside this variable. And inside the variable, it's my name. So my name is being sent in here, and the line number six, it's going to the console. Great, so that works. That means I can create my second one. Let last name equals to, and uh, Ayakono, perfect. So first name and then last name. Save the configs, check over there, and I have my first and last name. I also can create a variable, not storing just a string, but a number. So let's go for let age equals to 28, as I'm 28 years old. Save, and uh, the console is not showing because we don't have the console. So console dot log, and uh, over here, H. Let me just scroll, bring this back up, save the configs, and uh, I have the number 28 over here. So great, the variables are working, but I'm a little bit far from 
what we are expecting for this project number one, yeah? The project number one was my name is, and then my name, and uh, I am my age years old. So how can I concatenate those two informations, yeah? Text and a variable right now. Let me explain that into the next class. We are so close to the end result. Now what we need is to concatenate the text plus the variables. And uh, the way you can do that is, let's say I have the first console log. I don't think I'm gonna need the last one. And I just rearrange my screen so you can see in real time what is showing into the console. Uh, if you are just following me, you can do the same thing in your screen, okay? So, the first one is, I wanna show the last name plus the first name. So let me just make this go away and the uh, first name plus last name. So this is the way I can do both of variables in one single console log. Let me save and uh, this is the result. We are missing one single space over here. So how can I do that? I can, after the plus sign, add the single quotes, put a space, and then another plus sign. So it's gonna look like this. The first variable, a space, and my second variable. Always use the plus sign to concatenate those ones. And we have a happy face. Yay, we have a happy face again. Uh, let me save, and now we have a space over here. So that means I can add normal text plus variables inside of the console log. That gives me idea to add another one over here and say my name is space plus and the first variable. So it's gonna be like this. My name is Andre and the space and the surname. Save the config. My name is Andrea Iacono. Perfect. So that one is working. The second one is the age. So for the age, I'm gonna use double quotes. I am plus age plus, and then I can use single quotes or I can keep using double quotes years old. I'm gonna put a space over here, otherwise it's gonna be all together. I am 28 years old, perfect. Line seven, line eight, they are working with text plus the variables. So I believe we got to the end. But I wanna show you something uh, even cooler or even better or some other features that you can use with variables. Variables are not just to store, you can actually change the data at any point in your code. And you can also make sure nobody can change your data inside of a variable down the line. So, yeah, let's go to the next class. Now that we know that variables do exist and we can work with variables, can I change the data inside of a variable? Yes, I can. So let me show you how to do that. So in my first example, the first name and the last name, those two variables, they hold a string. If you point to the variable, you can see what type of data is inside. JavaScript does that by itself, it checks, and uh, it makes the assumption that it's a string inside. When I point to age, it knows it's a number, okay? But let's say I wanna change my age. If I wanna change my age, I just need to type the variable again without the let, or I can use the let, and change to 32, my actual age, okay? Why not? Uh, save, and look at this. It changed it to 32, years old over here. But what happened if I don't want to? I wanna make sure the variable stays with that data. Maybe it's a math calculation, I'm calculating uh, some percentages and uh, that number needs to keep the same. 
So instead of using let, we need to use const. When you use const, JavaScript knows that's a variable, but a variable that cannot be changed later on in your code. As soon as I save, I get my error. Assignment to constant variable at 65. So main.js lines five and six. So JavaScript doesn't like that. But if you wanna make sure the variable stays with that information throughout the whole code and nobody can change later on, you should use constant, constant. Const, const. Otherwise, you use just let. Let me save the information and uh, here we are, good to go again. And the same happens to any other variable, just repeat the variable and uh, you have the result. So that's it. That's our project number one. We got to the end, we use the variables, we know how they works and uh, congratulations, well done. Welcome to project number two. In this project, we're gonna work with input, a few math calculations, and also we're gonna have to convert a string to an integer. And the end result that I'm looking for in this project specifically is this. So let me just refresh my page and uh, I see straight away a prompt. This prompt is asking, please enter your first name. Okay, let's do it. Andre, please enter your last name. My last name is Ayakono. And clicking in OK, please enter your age. As usual, 28 years old. There we go. And right now on the right hand corner, I can see my first name, my last name, and the number 30. But as far as I, as far as I remember, I did type the 28. So something is changing to 30. Looks like we have a, a plus two, just as a, as a tip. So the main point right now is get this prompt to send whatever, actually store that into a variable and send the variable data into the console and uh, specifically to the age we should add two. So this is the project. Let's go to the next class where we start to coding that. In order to bring our project number two alive, we need to work with prompts. A prompt is a sort of interaction with the end user. So I'm asking the end user to type some information and I need to store, store that information into a variable. So the project that I have right now is I have the same index uh, HTML file linking the main.js. My style.css file is totally empty and the main.js file is also empty. So the first thing I'm gonna do is create a variable called first, uh, first name. And uh, instead of typing my first name over here, I'm gonna ask the JavaScript to prompt a message asking for the first name. The way I do that is I use the prompt function. Inside of the prompt function, I can type whatever the text that I want, and this text is gonna be showing on the top of the prompt that shows in the, into the page. So my text was, please enter your first name, colon and space. So when the, whenever they type the first name, it won't be together with the colon, yeah? Just always leave a space. And uh, just to make sure I can, uh, just to make sure I'm storing the information typed from the user to the variable, I'm gonna console log, uh, console log this first name. Perfect, okay? So this is my code. Let's try, let's see if it's working. I'm gonna save the change and immediately the prompt is working. Please enter your first name. 
I enter the name and my name should be showing into the console right now, which it is line number two of the main.js file. So the prompt function works. And you may be thinking, what is a function? A function is a set of either rules or tasks predetermined by the JavaScript, for example. So let's say when, you, when you're watching TV, yeah, you have a remote control and then you change the channels. Yeah, The act of changing the channels means you are executing a function, a function inside of the remote and uh, everything that it has, but you actually executing, triggering a function. Same over here, prompt, there are a lot of codes inside of the prompt, yeah? But they bundle those together into a function and then you can use that function anywhere in your code. It's very easy. First one is done. So let me make our life easier in here and uh, get the first one, copy and paste down here because I need another two times. First one, last name and age. First, last name and age. Please enter your last name. Please enter your age. Okay, let me save that. Before I save that, let me just duplicate and then one more time the console. Oh, I didn't copy. <laughs> I didn't copy that. So let me copy that and uh, place over here and over here. There we go. So the first variable is the first name and then the last name. And then the last one is the age. Okay, saving the config and uh, please enter your first name, Andre, last name, Ayakono, and your age, 28 years old. Here we are. I don't know if I'm on the same lines, but at least I'm getting the result. The only problem is I'm getting the actual age. I'm not getting the plus two, but I'm gonna leave that task for the next class. Right now, the code that I have is three variables prompting a text. You enter the text, the text is stored into the variable and the variable is showing into the console log. So that's it for now. Let's go for the next class where I can solve the mathematical problem of adding plus two into the age. So our next step in the project is to solve the mathematical problem where I need to type my age and add a plus two. How can I do that? A simple math equation inside of our code. So what I'm gonna do is let's get the age again, which is the age variable and do this way. I'm gonna get age and add plus two. So now the age is the age itself plus two. So when I print the age to the console, it should be whatever I type plus two. Okay, let's save the configuration and try that out. Andre, Iacono, and the age is 28. Okay, did it work? Sort of, <laughs> kind of, yeah. First name is okay, last name is okay, but the, the age is 22, 28, two. Actually, it didn't work in a way. It's not the result that I'm expecting, but it didn't work because JavaScript took the 28 and add the number two at the end. And the JavaScript didn't do the actual math calculation because he doesn't know it's a number. If you point your cursor to the age variable, you should see the age variable is being treated by as a string. So JavaScript thinks this is a string, is a text and not an integer or a number. So how can I do that? Right over here inside of the prompt, we have another function called or the reason this function exists is to convert strings into a number. This value in here, JavaScript knows is a number, but the variable itself, it's a string. So whenever I type something into the prompt, it's getting to the JavaScript code as a string. I need to change that. So how can I 
change that. I'm gonna call a function uh, named parse int. Function parse int. This function converts, as I said, from string to integer. So parse int, open and close parentheses, and I'm gonna copy and paste or just move this to inside of the parse int function. The result should be something like this. As soon as I type the number two, the number two is a string. This string is being converted or parsed it into a number, an integer, and now this should be showing as a number. So a number, whatever I type over here, 28, for example, plus two, it should equal to 30. So let's double check before we test that. Um, as soon as I point to this age, age now, it's a number. Age is not a string anymore. Over here is a number, right over here is a number. So I should get a result as a number and not a string like the other two. Save the config and let's test. 28 and my result is 30. Right now, we are getting the right result. So that's how you can solve this math equation, which wasn't a math problem. It was just a um, variable type problem. Welcome to the project number three. And in this project, we're gonna add some colors to our web page, yeah? So basically what I'm looking for is change the background color of our HTML page, add some text, and uh, do all these fancy changes over here. For example, my text, hello world is centered. Uh, we have a space between the letters. We have a shadow going on, a color blue. So we need to make all of these changes. What does that mean? That means we're gonna work with the CSS file, the style.css file. But before, we have to link that style.css file into the HTML page. This is the face of our project, and I hope we can get it right at the end. Okay, so let's go, let's get busy. Our goal now is work with the CSS file. And uh, to do that, I need to make sure the HTML file can see the CSS file. If you remember a few classes ago, we did the link between the HTML file and this JS file, which is working fine. And uh, right now we're gonna work with the HTML file to the CSS file. So we need a link between them. Actually, the link is gonna be applied over here. So let's see how can I do that. Back to my HTML file, inside of the head and uh, the link, the place where you need to put the the reference to the CSS file as a best practice should be inside of the head, should be one of the first um, tasks the browser will do when it loads a web page. So over here, I'm just gonna type link and uh, I can see the option to CSS. The code is link rel to style sheet CSS and uh, the visual code is guessing my file name is style.css, which is right, style.css. So if you want is styles or anything else, just change to style.css. I did change my one and uh, I believe it's working now. I'm gonna save the config and there is nothing. So just a blank page. Okay, so that's great. Right now I wanna test that. I wanna make sure I can change the background color through the CSS file. So the change I'm making right now is inside of the CSS file, I am gonna change the background. If I change the background of the CSS file, that should reflect into the HTML file. Okay, so let's go there. Style.css. What I wanna change is the whole section of the body. I can change paragraph, I can change um, letters or words or links. In my case, just to be very easy and simple and straightforward, I wanna change the whole body. So I'm gonna start over here. So I type body and then 
curly bracelets. There we go. I have the scope to start making my changes. The first change that I want to make is the background color. The background color, if I remember correctly, the background color, I believe it was this color in here, pearly wood. You can change to whatever color you want. I just want to make sure the link is working. That's why I'm changing the color right now. So I'm going to save this config and going back here to my project. There we go. It changes, yeah? If I pick another color, and this color doesn't need to be by name, it can be by hex as well. So if I could background color, um, and uh, I can choose the hex values right over here. If I go for blue, save the file, I got the background blue, okay? So basically, that's what I need. I'm gonna change back to pearly wood. The linking between the CSS file and the HTML file is done. Now we can go to the next class where we're gonna add the hello world and make the few chains and tweaks inside of the CSS file as well. Now let's go for the font size. The first thing I wanna do is type the hello world message and make a reference, a placeholder for this hello uh, world message. So I can go to the CSS and make the changes as I want to. So back to the index, my hello world, hello world will be here, okay? But if I leave hello world just like that and save the config, it will be right here. But there is no reference of a place, a placeholder so the, can, the CSS file can go there and make a change. So if I wanna make that reference, I need to use a header, for example, a H1 value. So if I do H1 and press tab to autocomplete and move this hello world inside of my H1, which is my heading reference, now whatever I change inside of the CSS file linking to the H1 will be applied to the hello world, okay? So right now, if you go to the web page, not much changed, yeah, just the H1, which is the basic standard. Okay, now I'm going back to the style page and before the body, I'm gonna type H1 space and the curly braces. Inside of this one, let's make a few changes, yeah? First, let's go for the font size. The font size I can pick between large, larger, medium, and so on. Percentage, inch, or pixels, or any measurement that you can find over here, yeah? In my case, I believe my example was using the 30. So right now, if we go, we save and go back to the web page, we should see a larger font size. Save, back to the page, and uh, it looks like it's larger. Let me see if I save. Yeah, it looks larger. Let's make um, 80. Save, and uh, didn't work. I forgot to put the PX. 80 pixels, save. And there we go, much better. But I don't wanna 80, I wanna just 30, 30 pixels, okay? 30 pixels, beautiful, that's working right now. The second change I wanna make is the color. Let's make this color as a uh, blue, I believe it was blue in my example. Save the config, check, yeah, it's blue. The next one is gonna be the font size. So I can, sorry, the font family. I can change the family to anyone in this list. In my case, I believe I chose Lucida Sams. There we go. Save. Yep, it did change. The next one is gonna be the alignment. I can make a change into the alignment over here. Uh, text alignment, that's the one. Text alignment and the uh, Center will be fine. Save the config and uh, there we go, it's there. The next one will be the space between the letters, yeah? So I'm gonna type letter spacing 
everything is so straightforward. If you have an idea, just start typing. It should be a, a configuration or a function or a code for that. Yeah, it's just start typing. If you don't know, just use Google or chat GPT to uh, help you out and uh, give you the right code. For this one, let's go for 10 pixels, yeah, 10 px. Save the config and uh, yeah, that looks good. I think I'm gonna make my font a little bit bigger, 14, there we go. And uh, the next one, and actually the last one will be the text shadow, text shadow. I need two pieces of information for the text shadow to work, yeah how text shadow is like a, a mirror, not a mirror, uh, a duplicate, you just duplicate the word and then you slide to the left or to the right and then uh, you slide down or up to make the shadow, yeah? It's just that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give uh, two pixels by two pixels. Save and uh, yeah. I kind of have. If I change the last one in here for 10 pixels, you should be able to see it did scroll down the letters from the back, yeah? So this one will move the letters forward and this one will move the letters down. If I wanna move the letter a little bit forward, let's say eight, there we go. I move forward and down. I believe in our case, three pixels and that three pixels will be ideal. There we go, we have it. So this is how we can change the, the look of our application inside of the CSS file. So right now, just as a quick recap, yeah? This project have a reference to the main.js page it does have a reference to the style.css page. The main page, I have nothing over here right now, but the style CSS, I do have some references, yeah? And then you can keep adding. If you have another one as a, H, uh, a H1, it will accept every single piece of configuration from uh, every single code from the style CSS. If you change to a H2, let's say change to a H2 over here, it will, accept another set of parameters or coding or customization that you can apply uh, into the CSS, yeah? I'm just gonna remove my one and leave as this. Okay, so this is the end of the project number three. Welcome to the project number four. And in this project, we're gonna work with the HTML file and the JS file. What I wanna do is enter uh, data. So prompt a user to enter a data, a name, for example. And this name will be returned to the actual HTML page plus a message, a greeting message. For example, hello, Andre. The software is gonna ask me for my name and it's gonna return hello, Andre, not to the console, to the actual HTML page. Page. That's the difference. So what I have over here is, I just reloaded my page. Let me just cancel over here. Reloaded my page. Please enter your first name, Andre, return, and uh, hello, Andre. So what do we have over here? We have that the, this is the name that I typed into the prompt. So this should be stored in some sort of variable. We have the greeting, which is a text. And uh, the main difference, this is into the HTML page. This is not into the console page. So I'm not gonna work with the console right now. I wanna make sure the input from the user returns to the HTML page. For that project to becoming alive, uh, we need to work with a function that is gonna make a change to the HTML code. So, hope you're excited. Let's go for the solution. Let's go for the solution of the project number four. And to apply the solution, we're gonna divide this problem into two parts. The first one is the prompt with the variable, 
And the second one is sending the data variable into the web page. So for the first one, just make sure that everybody's on the same page. My HTML file has references to the style.css and the main and the main.js. That's it. Yeah. Styles, uh, style.css empty and main.js empty as well. Okay. So if I console.log uh, just a, a high message, it should work and it is working over here. So we have the link working. Okay. First step, let me create a variable called first name. And this variable, we have a prompt uh, processing instruction. Now you will have a prompt and this prompt will have a question. Uh, please enter your first name. Okay. There we go, like this. Please enter your first name. Let's make sure this is working and uh, console.log and uh, first name. Okay, save my first name, Andre, return, and uh, Andre is being returned to the console. This is the problem. I don't want to return to the console, I want to return to the web page. To return to the web page, we need to do something else. First, where am I going to return this to the web page? To which place? To the head, to the body, to the HTML. And if you pick one, what position is going to go? So let's check it out to the index.html file. Normally, we're going to return this into the body because if you return to the head, you should be able to see it. Yeah. So inside of the body, I need to make some sort of uh, reservation or a placeholder into a paragraph, for example. So I'm going to type over here the P and press tab. This is a paragraph. And uh, inside of the paragraph, I'm going to give this paragraph an identification, a name. I'm going to call it ID, sorry, space ID. I press tab and the, the name for that is going to be greeting just like this. So whatever I send to a greeting is going to be displayed inside of this paragraph. It's going to be displayed here. Okay. I'm gonna, not going to leave the here over here, but it's going to be uh, placed over there. I'm going to save this config and um, just type nothing happens. Why? Because I have the placeholder into a paragraph but nothing is being sent to greeting, to this ID. So when I go to the main.js file, I need to take the content of this variable and send to the HTML page into the greeting position ID. Okay, how do I do that? There is a function called document.get element by ID. This is the method get element by ID. And inside of this get element by ID, I need to type the identification of the HTML page. In our case is greeting. Did I say in a, a singular or plural? Singular. Okay. Greeting, greeting. Perfect. That's it. Dot. And I'm going to add a uh, property called inner HTML to insert into the HTML. Okay, so I'm using the function to get the ID and the ID name I'm giving the name is greeting. Insert into the HTML, but insert what? Equals to my variable first name. So insert into that my variable first name, which is a string. I'm going to save the config, type my name, press return, and voila, it's working. So my name is being returned into the paragraph, which is inside of the HTML. Okay. But as far as I remember, the project was uh, giving me an extra message. It was saying, hello, 
space, and then my name. So in the next class, I'm gonna show you how to do that. If you wanna challenge yourself, try to do that without watching the next class, yeah? And then just go for the next class just to make sure you got that right, yeah? So wish you the best, have a go, and uh, I see you in the next one. Okay, so I hope you got that right, and uh, let's just check what is my solution. There are many ways I can solve that problem. Uh, I believe I'm going for the easiest one. I'm gonna create a new variable called greeting, and uh, the content of this variable is gonna be a static text, uh, hello, space, and then I'm gonna concatenate this variable into the other variable, the first name. So let's see how, how I can do that. Uh, my second variable will be uh, greeting, and this variable will have the string hello, hello and space, simple like that. At the end of the document function, I am adding the greeting plus first name. So those two variables will be added into the HTML page. The first variable is my name, the second variable is the greeting with a space at the end. Save the config, Andre, return, and hello, Andre. This is the variable greeting, and this is the variable first name. They are both returning to the HTML page, and nothing is being returned to the console page. So I hope you enjoyed this project and I see you in the next one. Welcome to the project number five. And uh, in this project, we're gonna learn about lists and the end result should be lists related or I should say arrays. So what I'm looking for is this. I have my web page over here, let me just, uh, Refresh that, and uh, there is nothing showing over here. So the magic is happening on the console. So the console, I have something very not friendly or sometimes weird, where I can see basically two lists. The first one with a few names and a number. The second one with um, a different set of names, actually. And, uh, and also a number, and then another name at the end. Let me just move this one to the middle so you can see, okay. And uh, another name at the end. I see the line is number three, number eight, number nine. So how can I duplicate this? How can I make this happen with my JavaScript code? As I said, this is uh, a topic related to arrays. So on the next class, I'm going to show you what is an array, how can I work with an array, and then we're going to solve that puzzle. Before we get into our project, let me explain to you what is an array, yeah? An array is basically the way you can store more than one information, more than one data, or different types of data into one single variable. Because right now, what we have is, if I have a... Um, uh, a name, yeah? And I wanna store that name into a variable, I just do like this, that's it. My name is Andre, is stored to a variable name. But what happens if I have more than one name? So for example, Anna, how can I store both data and representing the data is as a single, uh, as a single, no, as a two pieces of data in one single variable? The way I can do that is using arrays. So I'm gonna start the same way. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna start the same way, let, and uh, I will give the array name as a variable. Uh, I will call my one friends. Friends, there we go. So I'm gonna build a list of friends. And to build this list, I need to use the square brackets. So I open and close the square brackets and inside I should give the data or the list of friends that I have right now, yeah? So let me just make some names up over here. Alan, and then we have Mark, and then uh, I should put in a single quotes, and then comma is space, single quotes again, the third one, let's say Julia, and uh, the fourth and last, uh, I would say Bella. There we go. Cool, so this is an array. 
just take the zoom out. This is an array. This array has four items inside. Just to make our life simple, those four items are strings. I didn't put any integer over here. How can I return the full array, the full list of items to the console? Same way I do with the normal variable. Console.log and then the name of my variable, in this case, the name of my array. Save, and here I have. So I have the alum, Mark, Julia, and Bella, the length it's four, and the prototype, it is an array. And it's coming from main.js, line number three over here at the right-hand corner. Great. What else can I learn about arrays? Each position inside of an array can be represented, or it is represented by a number, and this number we call index. So let's say for any reason I need to call a single item inside of an array. How can I do that? I go for the console.log, my array name is friends, and inside of my square brackets, I can type a number. And this number is the index number representing the location of each item inside of an array. So if I put a number one in here, what do you think is gonna come up? So let me just uh, do this. What do you think is gonna come up as a result? Let's check it out. Save and comes up Mark. You may be thinking, why is Mark? If we check this out, the index number starts counting as a zero. So alum is the index position zero, Mark is number one, Julia is number two, and Bella is number three. Uh, a lot of people get very confused with this because they think number one is the first one in here, but indexes, they start counting as a zero. That's why we have that. And if you did really pay attention, which I believe you did, uh, you saw the numbers when I expanded this arrow over here. I believe you saw the numbers and the numbers, uh, prior or before the name or before the item, they are the indexes. So let me just take my pen off here and uh, this is what I'm talking about. There we go. Index zero, index one, index two, and uh, index three. This length is four. So with that said, can I replace items inside of my array? Let's see. Let's see if I can replace some items over here. I want to replace uh, the item number one, yeah, Mark. So I'm gonna say friends. I'm gonna call my array again. And uh, for, for the friends in the position index number one, this position will have a new value. And this now new value is gonna be Anna. So as soon as I save my project, Mark should go away. It will be replaced by Anna and over here as well. Saving, and here we are. I replaced the position index number one. What happened if I, if I type an item name or give a data to an item and uh, with an index that doesn't exist? So let's say index number, what do we have? We have one, zero, one, two, three, index number four. What do you think is gonna happen? So friends, index number four equals to Joe, yeah, Joey. Save the config and look what happened. Index number four didn't exist. But because the array is dynamic and uh, you can increase and decrease its size, its size dynamically. Uh, the friends index number four didn't exist, but now it does, it just add to the end. I can do that for index number five, six, and seven, and so on. So if the number of the index does have some data, it will be replaced, otherwise it will be just added to the list. So cool, huh? And don't forget that inside of the array list, you can also add different types of data. Right now we did the, 
we did the string, but we can also add the integer or a number. So let's say friends and the index number five and inside of the index number five will have the value 100. Save, and now we have the value 100. And 100 belongs to the index number five. Arrays. It's a great way to store more than one type of data or one data into a variable. Very useful. Now that you know how arrays work and what can we do with them, let's uh, build our project. It's a very simple one, but I wanna make sure you fully understand the power and how can you play and work with the arrays. So what I have over here is that, and as far as I remember, the first name of, of my array, I, I had two arrays actually, not two arrays, a same array, but with, with a few changes. Yeah? You can do two arrays as well, the result will be the same, but I just wanna make sure I have one array and uh, a few changes, and then I printed out that array again, yeah? So as far as I remember, the first name was Alan, the second name was Mark, the third name was uh, Julia, and the fourth name was Bella for the first array, so the first part is okay. And then we made a few changes for the second one, yeah? The second one, so I did print the console. I did print this first array. So the first array is there. So this is the first part. And then we made a few changes. Uh, to the position number one, to the index number one, I did add Anna. And uh, for the position number four, I changed Anna actually, Mark to Anna. And the position number four, I believe was Maverick. Yeah, Maverick. And then the position number five was the number one. We print it again. And then we printed just the Anna. I think that was the solution, yeah? Let me just save the config. Yes, it is. So just put it aside. And uh, we have two arrays where the first one is Alan, Anna, Julia, Bella, and Maverick, and number one. And the second one is the Alan, Anna, Julia, Bella, Maverick, and the number one. So basically, I built the first array, made a few changes, and then built the second array, storing both types, string and numbers. So this is my solution. Can you achieve the same result building two different arrays and printing the result to the console? Yes, you can. It's just two ways of doing. Welcome to the project number six. And in this project, we're gonna talk about if and else statement. It is so cool. I have never ever seen a, a program or an application, a, a piece of software without an if and else statement. They are everywhere. And uh, it's so nice when you see they then working for the first time. So what I have for this project is, I will give uh, the project uh, some descriptions, not some descriptions, uh, some, instructions to work, yeah? And the instruction should be this one. I'm gonna ask the user to enter a number between zero and 100. And this number is gonna be the grade of the student, for example, yeah? And if the grade is between 90 to 100, you should get a, an A. If it's 80 to 89, you should get a B and C and D, and if he's below 60, this student is in trouble because his one is F. So this is the project that I wanna build. I wanna make sure it works. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of if analysis inside of them. But first, in the next class, let me show you how the if and else uh, statements do work and uh, how can I start getting myself getting my head around it of the if else, and then make this project uh, alive. Okay, so let's go to the next class. It's time to dive in into if and else statement. And uh, to make this topic more interesting, let's build a very, very small uh, application where we have an age, and uh, based on a number, I wanna return to the console 
if the number makes the person an, an adult or not yet or not an adult. And the number can be 18, for example. So how the if and else statements work? Let's first create a variable. This variable we'll call as uh, age. And the age over here will be 18 years old. Oh, sorry, 20 years old. 20 years old, okay. And then inside of my code, I want to make sure if the age is greater than 18, it's an adult. And if it's lower than 18, it's not yet an adult. So let's make that happen. A very simple if and else statement. So I will start with the if, and then inside of parentheses, I need to add my condition. What is my condition? Age, if I can type age. Age should be, if age is greater or equal than 18, what is happening? What should I return? And then I open and close the curly braces, and then I need to return my statement. So if that condition is true, what should I return? I return to the console.log. Um, for example, you are an adult. You are an adult. Okay, simple like that. If the age is greater or equal to 18, you are an adult. And then I can keep adding more statements over here, or I can just leave these curly braces and go to the second part. The second part is the else. I can use else or else if. If I had more options, for example, oh, if you are between 13 and uh, 19, you are a teenage, so young, teenage, adult, more options, I will use the else if and else if and else if. But because I only have two, I don't need to use the else if. I'm going to use just the else. So the else will be what? Uh, the else will be return to the console dot log the message you are you are not yet an yet an adult period you are not yet an adult simple like this yeah so the first statement the first condition is uh, equal or greater than 18 if that it's not that means it falls to the second one so the if and else statements always checks from the top to the bottom If this one is true, it returns the statement. If it is false, it will jump to the next uh, section of my if and else. It will check the condition. In my case over here, the else doesn't have a condition. So is anything else, yeah? Anything else that's not the first one. So if you want to try that and see if that works. Let's try, let me save the config, and it says you are an adult. Okay, because the number is 18. How about the number is 20? How about 18? 18 is an adult. Why is an adult? Because it's greater than and equal to. If I do 17, you are not yet an adult. If I do 89 years old, you're definitely an adult. So if statements, So cool, so easy to work with. And um, again, if, if you check any, any, any application out there, they will have at least one if and else statement. Now it's time to code our project and get some grades to our students. What I'm gonna do right now is from A to F, I'm gonna build the if statements from higher number to lower number. There are so many ways you can solve these if and else statements and get to the same result. I believe this is the easiest one, but 
it's not the only one. There are many other ways, yeah? So let's go for my way of solving this. First thing, uh, to make our application a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna ask the user to enter the grade from zero to 100. So the first variable will be grade, and this variable will have a question. So there is a prompt over here, and this prompt will have a question. Please enter your grade. Please enter your grade. I can also give an example uh, between 0 to 100. And uh, I think that's all. 0 to 100. Yeah, please enter your grade. 0 to 100. Okay, let's check if this is working. Uh, Console.log and then grade. Save, the prompt should be here. Please enter your grade, 100, return. Yes, I have the number 100 returning to the console. Great. Next part, let me just erase this. Let's start our if and else statement from the top to the bottom from the 100. So if the grade is greater or equal than 90, greater or equal than 90, what should I return? I should return, let me see, uh, your grade is A. Okay, so I should return console.log and uh, your grade is A, period. Okay, yeah, so that's the one. The next one, yeah. I should, ret should I return the console. Ah, I can also return as a, as an alert, as a, a response to the prompt. I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, we did a lot of consoles, yeah? Alert is a function that returns as a pop-up message to the uh, actual page. I think it will be more, more interesting like this. The second one. The second part is a else, else if, yeah? So the second one is the else if, and the else if will be something like this, else if. What is the condition? If the grade is greater or equal to 80, I can leave some spaces in here, or I can do without spaces, that's no problem. We're gonna set an alert to say your grade is B, okay? Great. Let's do the same thing for C. If your grade is greater than 70, your grade is C. And the last one, let's go for D, yeah, D. I think D is 60, let me just double check. D is 60, yep, 60, it's D. And uh, anything below 60 should be F. So the last one, the last one, I'm not, not gonna even mention the 60, yeah, because anything greater or equal than 60, that means anything below 60 falls to the last one. So the last one is just a simple else, and inside of this else, just an alert, because this is the last statement. Your grade is F, uh, C, D, hey, I'm missing something here. Let me see what I'm missing. No, I'm not missing. Uh, a, B, C, D, and F. I, I thought I was missing the E. I'm not missing anything. There we go. So your grade is F. Let's save this and see if it's working. What is your grade? So I'm an excellent student. My grade is 95. 95, your grade is A. It works. Let's refresh the page. My grade is, I'm not very good, 40. Your grade is F. Let's go in between, yeah? Let's go in between. Let's try to reach the, the C. Anything from 70 to 79. So my grade is 75, it should be C, that's it. So this is our code, 
as I said, there are so many ways to achieve this one. And there are a few problems over here as well. I, I didn't set any kind of uh, error uh, treatment. Or if somebody just entered the number 200, they will get the grade A. But I want anything from 0 to 100. There are ways we can improve this code. It's not going to be right now. But just keep that in mind, okay? There are some problems over here, but at least it's returning. When somebody enters the right number, it is returning the right grade. Let's go for the project number seven, where we're going to work with arrays and for loop. So arrays, we know how that works. Uh, it's a list that can store more than one data or one item inside, but how about for loops? And the reason I'm, I'm going to teach you how the for loop works, especially with arrays right now, it's for our project. I want to make, I want to build an application that can store three pieces of information, three colors, for example. This is what I'm expecting as an end result. So my application is going to ask me, Enter, please enter the color number one. Okay, color number one, blue. I press return. Please enter the color number two, green. Please enter the color number three, yellow. Return your list of colors is blue, green, and yellow. So looking at this result, uh, we can guess there is a array in there, there is a list in there, yeah? But how can I store this information into a array? So for that, we need the for loop, yeah? For loop is a way you can repeat a statement or a function or anything inside for a number of times without repeating the code itself. It's so cool. And uh, on the next class, I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, let's dive in into for loops. And uh, to show how for loops is easy to work, let me give you an example. I want to print to the console, uh, console.log, uh, the word hi. But I want to print this one five times. So the easy way I would do that so is going to be two, three, four, and five, yeah? And then I come here, hi one, and then hi two, and then hi three, and hi four, and the last one, hi five. Very time consuming, but at least I have the end result. Try to do that with a hundred times. It's going to be very hard, yeah? A thousand, even harder. So is there any way I can ask the, the JavaScript to loop between those numbers and start counting those numbers and give me the end result? Yes, that is. And we're going to replace all of these for two lines of code. This is the for loop. Okay, so let me save and let's start the for loop. For loop, the first statement, I, I need to give the, the for loop three statements, yeah? The first one inside of the for loop is the initialization process. So first, I need to initialize a variable. So let's start a variable, let's put a variable over here, say a variable i, i of index, can be x, can be l, can be anything. It's a normal convention that you normally or always, most always, most every single time we use i, i is equal to zero. What I'm saying over here is, if you want a loop, we need to count how many loops. So JavaScript needs a base to where should I start counting. So it starts counting on index zero. So if it starts counting on index zero, when the loop is going to stop? So that's the second statement or the condition, I would say, yeah? So it will stop when i is less than 5. I would say less than equal, yeah? Less than and equal to 5. So we start in 0. We stop on less than or equal to 5. 
And uh, what is the increment? Every time I loop, should I count plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four? In our loop, I need plus one. So I plus plus means increment as a one. I, I minus minus incre uh, decrement in one. So I'm gonna leave as a one one, okay? Curly braces and the inside is my statement itself, yeah? My statement is console dot log and uh, I wanna the word high. There we go, simple like that, okay? So we have the first statement, oh, over here is semicolon and uh, let's run. So executing and I have six highs. Wow, I have six highs. Can you see those six highs? Yeah. So I have six highs over here. Why do I have six highs? Because it's from index zero to index less than and equal to five. If I want to just five, it's just going to be less than. Now I have my five highs. But I didn't see the high one, the high two, the high three, the high four, the high five, yeah? I can concatenate that with plus i. Show me the number. Let's just get a space over here and uh, execute it again. Hi, zero, one, two, three, four, five. We are very close, very close. I need to fix something. Start from one and uh, less than or equal to five. Now I have the one, two, three, four, five. So did you see how simple is the four? For the initialization, the top, where the one is top, or the condition, yeah? And then the increment. And down here, the statements. You write the statement, and then you execute the for loop. Very simple, pretty straightforward. But on the next class, I wanna show you how can we work with arrays, arrays, and for loop at the same time, so we can build our, our application. Now it's time to build our project with arrays and also for loops. If you remember, the project was, I will give my application uh, three colors and it will restore the three colors and return the three colors as an alert. You can return as a console as well, but I chose as an alert. So the first part of my code, I need to create an array, but I cannot give the items inside of the array. I need to dynamically add the items inside of the array, but at least we need an array to start, yeah? So my array is gonna call uh, list colors, something like that, or color list, better. Color list. And the color list is an empty array. I'm gonna leave like this, color list, is an empty array, so I can start adding items to my array later on. And uh, because the prompt must show, must pop up three times, I need a for loop. So the for loop will start in zero and it goes to uh, two or three in our case, or equal to three, or it starts on one and equal to three, but it needs to loop three times. And every time it loops, it needs to ask another question. And every time it gets the answer, in our case, our caller, it needs to get this information, this data, and insert into the array. So let's go for the for loop, yeah? So the for loop is let i equals to uh, zero, where i must be less or equal to two. So it's gonna spin for three times, the zero, the one, and the two. So let me just make some spaces here. And then I has an increment of one. So every time it loops, what should I do? I'm gonna create a new variable called color, okay? So this variable color is gonna have a prompt and the prompt is the question to enter the color. So prompt, parentheses, 
and uh, please enter the uh, please enter the color. Please enter color. Something like this. Please enter the color. The result of this will be inserted to color list. It will be inserted to my array. But how can I insert something into an array? You may be thinking, okay, I can call the array index. It starts on index zero. But and then I have to keep adding this number, yeah? There is a function called push. It's called, sorry, functional uh, method called push, yeah? This method will insert into the array wherever is typed to the variable caller. So just recapping, the prompt will show, please enter the caller, and I enter the caller blue. So blue is the data inside of the variable caller. The next statement is insert the information inside the caller to the array color list. So it's going to insert right over here. And then it's going to run the loop again and ask the second question and then the third question. Okay, let's see if that works. Oh, I have no alerts. I have no alerts. My last one is going to be a alert to... And this alert will be your list of colors is, and then I will add the color list. Simple like this. Okay, so your list of color is plus the color list. Let's see if it works. Save the config and uh, go to the prompt. Please enter a color. I will enter blue. If I can type blue. The second color, it doesn't say the second. I need to fix that, yeah? The second color, green. The third color will be red. Your list of colors is blue, green, red. It works, but I need to fix something else here. As far as I remember, the, the initial request was, not request, but I, I remember seeing the, please enter your caller one, caller two, and caller three, yeah? How can I solve this? Please enter the caller, and uh, let me just take this away. I'm gonna add the I as a number. And then I'm going to add the column. Please enter the color space, the number space. Should I get a space here? No, I think without a space. This, I think this, this is going to work. Please enter the color zero. <laughs> no, color zero it won't work. <laughs> color zero it won't work. Color zero doesn't sound good, yeah? So I'm gonna start on one, and uh, one, two, three, okay? So please enter the color one, should be. Please enter the color one, okay? Blue. Please, I typed it wrong, I mistyped blue. Uh, color two, red, color three, yellow. And uh, I have blue, red, and yellow, but the numbers did work. So I'm happy with the result. Can I improve this? Yes. Should you improve that? Why not? Just go crazy. Just add whatever you want. Maybe you rephrase this and uh, please enter the caller number and then the number, caller number one, caller number two, caller number three or your list of colors is, and color number one, color number two, color number three. I don't know, you can, you can do a lot of different inputs and outputs over here. But I, I kind of like the result, yeah? We did work with an array. We learned how to push an information 
from uh, user input into the array. And uh, as I said, I'm happy with the result. Yay, here we are. You made it, you made it to the end. So this video is just to say a big thank you. Thank you so much for being with me, all these videos and planning and coding and making our projects. And uh, I'm really happy with the results. Please come back more often. You're gonna see I'm always uploading more videos, more projects, more fun. So yeah, I hope I see you soon. And uh, a big thank you from your instructor.